What's going on guys, Shane here. So today I wanna to reflect on the big fight that happened last night, Conor McGregor against Floyd Mayweather. You may have heard about it. I wanna break down some of the strategies, clear up some confusion, and give you my personal take on what I saw happen last night. First and foremost, I have to commend Conor on a tremendous performance early on in that fight. I think he shocked the boxing world, shocked Floyd Mayweather, especially when Floyd came in with that straight right, that right hand lead that he usually lands because it's a nice, quick, accurate shot. Connor saw that punch coming, and he slipped and landed a perfectly executed rear uppercut that popped Floyd's head back. And it was at that moment that I heard the entire tone of the room change. I was watching with a bunch of Floyd Mayweather fans, and I'm a fan of Floyd myself, but they were mocking Connor early. They were talking about how easy of a flight it's gonna be for Floyd. And then at that point, when he landed that uppercut, everyone was quiet. They saw that he really deserved to be in that ring. And that was a really cool moment for me. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I was uh, sort of rooting and had predicted that Floyd Mayweather would win this fight. Mostly for uh, the sake of boxing's fate, the sport of boxing, but also I do respect Floyd as a fighter. And we're talking about personal life aside. I always learn something when I watch him fight. And this was no different when I watched this fight. So, what we saw correctly from Connor was early on in that fight, he put the pressure on him. When he had Floyd against the ropes, he was landing those left straights. He was putting the pressure on and landing a lot of those shots when he was in the center of the ring. Same thing, he was quicker to the punch, he was faster with his reaction and his defense and his head movement, and he was landing the better shots. But at the end of round two, we already saw that Connor had his mouth open, he was breathing heavy, he was already getting exhausted. Now here's the thing, he probably could have won that fight if he kept up at that pace. The only thing is, it's humanly impossible. Lactic acid builds up, muscle fatigue, and your cardio starts to drain. You can't, if you start at 100% in the first round, in the first 20 seconds, you, you have no other choice but to go downhill from there. You're gonna slow down. Your reaction time is gonna be slower. There's gonna be less pop on your punches, less power, less speed. You're gonna be able to defend less, and you're gonna take more damage. That's one of the things that he said is, you know, it was fatigue. I wasn't damaged. He didn't throw powerful shots. He wasn't very fast. But that's all part of the sport. That's all part of the game. You know, if, if you don't finish your opponent early on, like you had predicted within four rounds, and you blow your load early, well then that's what's exactly gonna happen, is you're gonna get picked apart. And if you don't have the energy now to roll with punches or to block and defend, which we didn't see any blocking. We saw little shoulder rolls from Connor, um, no real parries. We saw some head movement, but once you get tired, you can't move as much. And then those punches, whether they're powerful or not, are going to do damage. Now that's one of the arguments that people were talking about is, you know, this fight was stopped prematurely. Why didn't they give him an A count, a standing A count? Guys, that's, it's in the rules. There is no standing A count. Usually that's an amateur boxing thing, not within the pro rules. Um, also, I think the ref did a perfect job. I think he stopped it at the right time. If you watch other boxing matches, you know, if you, if you gain a little bit more knowledge in the sport of boxing, you'll see that that's pretty common. That's pretty standard. If you're taking a bunch of punches and you're not answering back, it's not MMA, it is boxing. And I also want you guys to do a little research and check out Pritchard Collin, uh, P-R-I-C-H-A-R-D-C-O-L-O-N. It's a fighter, a young fighter who, you know, a little different, he took punches to the back of the head, but was put into a coma and to this day is, is in a vegetated state and it's, it's really something that's, that's horrible and sad and we don't want that to happen to, to a fighter that we look up to and respect and wanna see him continue fighting like Conor McGregor. So for that reason, I do not think it was premature. I think it was the right move from the ref uh, and stopped at a perfect time. Cool, so let's talk a little bit more about strategies. Uh, Floyd Mayweather early on knew that this was the game plan. He wanted to tire Conor out. So what he was doing was landing that right hand to the body a lot early, right? Straight right to the body. When it hits you in the solar plexus, it hits you in the stomach, hits you in the ribs, uh, it, it does damage, but even more than that is it drains you. And then we started to see Conor McGregor's legs stiffen up and another reason is because he was doing a lot of switch stance. It was working, it was confusing Floyd, but that takes a lot of energy to have to do this and switch your stance. It's a full body movement. And when you're running a marathon in a boxing match, you have to pace yourself. You know, cardio aside, we didn't, we saw him doing rowing, we saw him swimming, uh, we saw him doing a little treadmill work, but I would have liked to see Connor do a lot more road work, a lot more running. He's talked about in interviews in the past where he says uh, running's bad for the joints, but at 28 years old, and you know, if you want to fight, a marathon of a fight in a boxing match, and you have to train properly for it. So I would have liked to have seen him do a little bit more cardio training, um, but even more than that, pace himself. You can't go at 100% uh, in round one and expect to do that through the rest of the fight, but you also can't do that early on in the round either. 
You know, just do it on a heavy bag. If you throw 25 of your hardest punches on the heavy bag, set your clock for three minutes, you'll notice for the rest of the round, you're tired, right? You go real hard like he does. You know, even his jabs are at 100%. He's looking to do damage. He's looking to hurt his opponent. But if you miss, that takes a ton of energy. Even if you land, that takes a ton of energy. And we saw that happen precisely throughout the entire fight. That was in round nine. Um, same thing, he still came out aggressive. He still was landing shots. Uh, I'm putting the pressure on Floyd, but it was in round 10 that he just had absolutely nothing left. He couldn't keep his hands up, he couldn't move his head, and he wasn't blocking like he should have been. One of the things that we saw and we saw a lot of confusion with was uh, when Floyd would cover up and Connor took his back. A lot of times he was creating an angle out to the right with that shuffle and he was taking Floyd's back. Now, what was very interesting to me was the commentators where they were talking, you could hear the obvious bias between them. Pauli Malignaggi actually defended Connor, which I thought was pretty cool because we know of their feud because of the sparring match. Um, but what they were arguing was you can't spin and muscle and turn or push or pull, which you can't. You can't physically turn and push someone in boxing. However, there were certain times where Connor was just creating that angle. He wasn't using his hands. He was using his feet to get to the backside of Floyd and Floyd would just wait for the ref. The ref didn't actually have to break that up, especially if Connor wasn't holding. He could have threw shots to the body and to the side of the head. Of course, he can't strike to the back of the head or to the spine, but you can't do that in any combat sport. So I thought that was a little interesting. I thought it was cool that Paulie backed him up and defended him in that situation. So again, more props and credit to Connor for being able to create such an angle on Floyd Mayweather. Very cool, very interesting stuff. Now I want to talk about some of the comments I've been reading online since this fight has happened. One of the questions that keeps popping up is, what did Connor mean when he said, I turned Floyd into a Mexican? People are trying to turn this into a race thing and it's really not. If anything, it's a compliment because Mexican style fighters tend to be the crowd's favorite style to watch. They're aggressive, they have forward pressure, and they throw a lot of punches. So ultimately what he was saying is, we put on a good fight for the fans. And he did. Another interesting fact that I read was that Conor landed 111 punches in the 10 rounds that they fought. Manny Pacquiao only landed 81. And I'm not taking anything away from Manny Pacquiao. He's a tremendous fighter, a great boxer, and athlete. And of course, he had that shoulder injury going into that fight. I'm just giving Conor the respect he deserves. He fought one of the best boxers of all time and did a great job. And if he had changed his game plan a little bit, I think he could have won it. And again, one of the reasons why I predicted Floyd Mayweather to win this fight was based on the comments that Conor McGregor said during interviews. When I was at the Los Angeles press conference, one of the questions that someone asked him was, you tend to gas out in the later rounds of your MMA fights, so how are you going to adjust your training for this boxing match? And his response was something like, well, I don't have to worry about kicks or takedowns or grappling, it's just punches, so therefore I'm already ready and conditioned for a 12 round boxing match. You're talking about 200 pound man there. You're talking about grappling exchanges, you're talking about elbows, knees, kicks. You're talking about a hell of a different context. A little boxing fight where there's a, where there's a referee to save the day every time there's a tie over the clinch. 12 three minutes is nothing. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but this game is very easy. It's a very easy game compared to my game. But as we saw, there is no time to rest. You can't clinch, you can't hold, you can't lay on the ground and catch your breath in a boxing match. You're constantly moving. You're constantly throwing hundreds and hundreds of punches, many more than he's used to throwing in MMA. And I speak from personal experience, someone who has fought in MMA, has fought in Muay Thai, and has competed in boxing. Boxing was the most physically draining. You have to be conditioned. Don't underestimate the sport of boxing. That's one of the closing statements that I want to make here is I feel that Connor's confidence has sort of turned to stubbornness. Uh, when I did my research and following his training for this fight, it seemed like he didn't do much different. He surrounded himself with a bunch of yes men. He didn't change his coaches. He was sparring with his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu coach for a boxing match. And I encourage you guys to stay open minded. You can absolutely be a fan. I want you guys to have uh, uh, fighters that you look up to but aspire to be better than these guys. You guys are the evolution. You guys are the next generation of fighters. So stay open-minded. And when you watch fighters, even if you don't like them personally, you still can learn something from them, all right? So even if it's your favorite fighter fighting someone you absolutely hate, watch both fighters, learn from them, and become a better fighter yourself. All right, I personally try not to become emotionally invested in fighters unless they're personal friends of mine. And for that reason, I watch the sport, I watch the skills. I don't care about what they're talking about before the fight, during, or after. I'm learning from what, what they're doing within the ring. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I want to hear your comments on the fights down below in the comment section. Let's get a little conversation going.
Until next time, I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the Underdogs.